Kim? Hi, Rick. They're gonna save you. Jadis Stokes comes as one of The Walking Dead's most mysterious characters. She's got a compelling backstory tied to the junkyard and a blurry future with the CRM. Introduced in Season 7, she took on the scavengers with a tribalistic style of leadership. She also became an important figure in the escalating war between survivor groups, but never gave up her loyalty to anyone. Now these are some of the more obvious facts about Jadis that every The Walking Dead fan knows. However, in this episode, we're going to look into the questions that are always lingering on our minds. Questions like where is Jadis that whole time? Or is Jadis really a bad guy? After more than a decade, these mysteries are about to be unraveled. Make sure you watch till the end, because once you know these secrets, Jadis won't be the same character you thought you knew. Are you ready? Let's do this. Now, just before we go into our video, we do have a small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to the channel. It's a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Now, let's begin. Time for after. What do we know about Jadis Stokes? After more than a decade of chomping down human flesh, there's still many characters in the Walking Dead universe with little to no clarity. Jadis Stokes is one of them, or should I call her Anne? I don't really trust people with more than one identity, and it looks like this one is a step ahead, and has a completely different personality. I mean, think about it. From fighting shoulder to shoulder to trading off Rick to the CRM, that does sound like two different people, doesn't it? Let's go ahead and decode her backstory, shall we? So Jadis first showed up in an episode of season 7 and immediately left a mark on the audience. She was introduced as the witty and worthy leader of a survivor group known as the Scavengers. Now, these fellas started out in the show by claiming that they only took supplies, I guess, without causing trouble. But we all know that escalated quite quickly. Soon, Jadis' scavengers got themselves entangled with not only Negan's saviors, but various other groups that include Hilltop, Oceanside, The Kingdom, and Alexandria. While these guys excelled in survival and had various skills as such, the quality of loyalty never quite became their strong suit, and they weren't shy about hiding that. Further, Jadis and her troops were never on one side. They would continue to switch allegiances like a cat, deciding whose lap to sit upon. With nobody's trust in their pocket, the scavengers are a tad scratched up in the loyalty department. This so-called boss lady portrayed herself and her group as a self-sustaining and harmless bunch of survivors, but this was all just cover. Jadis was secretly working for an unknown organization that loved helicopters, which later turned out to be the Civil Republic military. Later, she would end up joining the CRM as a citizen by trading Rick Grimes, moving herself even higher up the ranks. Jadis Stokes before the junkyard. After she became a well-known member of the CRM, Jadis opened up about her past life her life before the junkyard and the scavengers. She has also revealed her roles in the past events of the TWD universe. Now, this is something that a lot of Walking Dead fans aren't aware of. Jada speaks openly to Hook over a few drinks after the initial days. Just like everyone else, she was a complete stranger to everything that came her way. From facing the cannibalistic walkers to running out of essential supplies, no one knew exactly what to do and Jadis was no exception. However, she survived the wilderness and everything she came across, including hostile survivors. She further talks about how the scavengers were formed without any effort in the initial days. I can imagine that nobody wanted to stay alone and wander those infested cities looking for food or water. And did you know that Jadis was a frequent visitor at the junkyard before any of this started? She was an art student from Virginia, and as we know it, one man's trash is another man's treasure. I'm sure Jadis would have earned all A's for her projects. I mean, if she can successfully lead a group in a junkyard to survive an apocalypse, it's safe to say her projects would have been easy peasy. She's not leading the scavengers by coincidence. In fact, there's only a handful of characters in the entirety of The Walking Dead who has the same leadership qualities as Jadis. Upon taking charge of the scavengers, she realized the group needed mutual interest to bond and work as a team. Jadis quickly came up with a plan of letting the group create a unique language using broken English words and phrases that were specific to them. 
and it was a masterstroke, something that tied the scavengers together as well as setting them apart from others. It was around then that she changed her name from Anne to Jadis. According to her, this new identity would push her harder in saving the world. Where was Jadis after season 9? Although she may have been a tough cookie, Jadis had a hard time settling down from the junkyard to Alexandria. And just when she thought she had the hang of it, fate moved her on once again. This time it was to the CRM. In the world beyond, she also revealed that without her scavenger crew, she felt aimless. And the confines of the Civil Republic added to her meaningless life. She must have been in an extremely depressed state, because in the Walking Dead universe, people would kill to switch places with her. She had more than enough food and security, which is something she couldn't have even imagined during those days in the junkyard. And yet, these luxuries failed to satisfy her. According to the conversation with Hook, she felt a void within herself. A void that couldn't be filled with anything available to the CRM. However, this was all great news for the guys in the CRM, as Lost Souls are the perfect candidate for the Civil Republic Armed Forces. Soon, Jadis had aligned her purpose in life with the CRM, blindly trusting Major General Beale. All this serves for reason for Jadis joining a new evil group, even though she regrets working with Negan. She did later get back to feeling herself and embrace the black CRM uniform. But even then, Captain Junkyard hasn't looked behind and kept climbing rank after rank. Today, Jadis Stokes is a well-reputed warrant officer. It might not sound like much, but a warrant officer in the CRM has its own power. She is responsible for keeping an eye on the internal workings of the CRM. Jadis not only investigates, but also presses charges against anyone in the CRM found guilty of anything from misconduct to treason. Jadis is one of those characters whose roles have altered drastically. In the junkyard days, she strictly followed the principle of not getting herself involved or bothering anyone. Now, as a warrant officer, she has to question everything. And that is the total opposite. Earlier, she would have trusted her crew with life and death decisions. But now, she's being paid not to trust a soul. How evil is Jadis Stokes? Some fans would say that Jadis is nothing but evil, but personally, I would say it's all about perspective. While she's set to return in the upcoming seasons of The Ones Who Live, we're really not sure about trusting her this time, given her roller coaster like nature. But just for fun, I do want to place my bet that Jadis is a good guy once again. Ever since she was introduced to the show, I've always had a theory that the character isn't quite what's shown to the audience. She's one of the strongest characters in the Walking Dead universe, and keeping her without any hidden layers would just be a waste. Additionally, Pollyanna McIntosh, the actress who portrayed Jadis, has confirmed that much like many fans, she also believes in her character, and sooner or later, the good will be revealed. McIntosh further pointed out that Jadis' character is operating in an apocalyptic scenario and regular judgments just don't apply there. Even good guys like Rick and Michonne have had to leave their ethics back at home and commit some horrific acts in the light of the apocalypse. And yes, this is just one way of looking at her. But it might not be wrong. Who would have imagined a guy like Negan could transform into a fan favourite apologetic character? Hmm? So all I'm saying is that the series is yet to conclude and there is a lot of unravelling to be done. Hi, Rick. Is Jadis returning to the new spin-off? We've been waiting far too long to get an answer on this one, and the wait is finally over because the answer is yes. She is definitely going to show up in The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live. Although the character is one of the most sophisticated and unpredictable, she was too good to quit. Jadis bid adieu to the ninth season of the show and left us somewhat clueless about her future. Keeping our love for Jadis apart, here's something solid. The creators have confirmed her return to the show later this season. Further, in an interview, McIntosh only showed her excitement for playing her part once again in The Ones Who Lived. The actress also showed off that she was already well aware of her return long before the character's exit from the show earlier. And an additional piece of interesting news, Jadis will appear with a new look. Something that's apparently been inspired by the early feminist figure Joan of Arc. So Jadis's character has changed a lot since she first appeared in The Walking Dead. Her decisions play a significant role in the overall story too. Yet while characters like Rick and Michonne are reuniting in the series, Jadis's role is not completely clear. Marvelous Verdict 
Jadis is a character with hidden layers and a mysterious story in The Walking Dead. Her journey involves constantly changing nature and a strong survival instinct. She started out as the brute leader of the scavengers and even faced a brutal clash with Simon's rogue saviour early on in the series. However, the show has hinted at deeper features to her character. These include connections to the CRM and an instability of emotions, suggesting more unpredictable developments perhaps. As we await her return, Jadis remains an unknown villain or possibly a hero in the post-apocalyptic tale. We hope you enjoyed these revelations about The Walking Dead's favourite characters, because we sure did. Thank you for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one. And if you liked our content, of course, don't forget to leave a like, and subscribe to us if you haven't done so already. Otherwise, have a good one, and be safe. Thanks, everyone. A lot. And then we fight your fight.